Hello, and thanks for using TickBoom. In this video, I want to take a look at a very interesting way to prove the formula for the area of a circle. So you may have seen that the area can be given by pi r squared, where r is the radius. Um, but you may never have actually been shown a proof of that. And, and naturally, there's probably many ways to prove it. But I stumbled upon a really interesting way to think about it that, that maybe you'll find interesting too. So I thought I'd share. Um, the way I came across this proof was um, I've been working on a lesson plan to teach how to calculate the volume of a cylinder as part of an assignment for my Master of Teaching program. And uh, in, in general, when you're working out volumes of any kind of prism, the basic idea is that you take the area of the base and multiply by, by the height. Um, so with a cylinder, the base is a circle. So naturally, to be able to um, teach the volume of a cylinder, you need to first make sure students understand the area of a circle. So that's kind of why I was looking into that. I stumbled across this really elegant way to, to prove that the area of a circle is given by pi r squared. And so that, that's just what I want to share here. So basically, it's almost like a geometric proof. So you, you can start by just drawing up a circle. So um, maybe to make sure my circle's not too bad, I'll just mark out some points. So basically, we know that a circle is defined as kind of um, the locus of all points that are equidistant from some center. So, so I've kind of just marked out some equidistant points and then I'll just do my best to, to fill in the gap in a way that's not too far from, from what a, a circle is. So there's my circle. This is the center, which means the distance from the center to anywhere in the circle will be the same. It will be r for the radius. Now, the basic idea of this proof, and it's really simple, uh, maybe I'll switch colors, but if you imagine I was to draw um, another circle just inside my first circle, so kind of right up against it, it would just be the tiniest bit smaller. Um, but it's basically a, a concentric circle, right, right up against it. And then what if I kept doing that? So if I, I did that again with, um, you know, uh, basically it, the, the width of these circles are basically the width of my pen. So, so they're always kind of, you, you have to imagine them kind of touching right up against each other. Um, so that if I was to keep doing this, all the way to the center, I'd kind of end up with, with a fully um, kind of shaded in circle, completely comprised of these concentric circles. And I won't keep going, but basically you kind of end up with your very last concentric circle being just kind of a dot, being the smallest um, kind of circle you could possibly do. So, so you kind of would end up with a fully filled in circle now the basic idea is to try and visualize what would happen if you were to kind of cut this circle at, at this point here and then kind of unwind each of, each of these concentric circles. So uh, this won't be perfect, but if I just go one, two, three. So if I have a line here, uh, one, two, three, four. So the same length as the radius of the circle. So it will have a length R. If I think about the outside of the circle, um, if I was to make a cut here and then kind of uncoil the circle and make it a straight line, it would, it would just be this straight line here. And the length of that line would be equal to the circumference of this outside circle. And um, basically, we know that the circumference is equal to pi times the diameter. And that's basically just rearranging the fact that pi is defined as the circumference divided by the diameter. So just a simple rearrangement gets you circumference as being pi times the diameter. Um, diameter we know is just twice the radius. So that's how you can kind of get um, pi times twice the radius or, or it's typically written as two pi r. 
So I know that the, the height of this first uncoiled line would be 2 pi r. Now this next uncoiled line, the red one, that's kind of right up against the first line, if I uncoiled that, it would again get a straight line and it would just be ever so slightly shorter than, than my first line because it's, it's just inside. And same deal with the next line, it would, it would still get a straight line, but it would just end up a little bit shorter. And same deal with the next one, and so on and so on. And hopefully you'd see that the pattern you get is essentially a filled in triangle. So if I connect this up, basically all of the lines would, would end up what I ultimately shaded in as a circle, I'd end up with just a shaded triangle. And so you've got this link here where actually it, it's, it's not intuitive, like you wouldn't necessarily um, jump to this, uh, you know, without prompting, but the reality is um, all circles can be thought of as just a, a rearrangement of a triangle. And so from there we can, we can take um, the, air, the formula for the area of a triangle and, and get to this result. So we know the area of a triangle is equal to half um, times the base times the height of the triangle. And so that's going to be half times, in this case, the base is the radius and the height is 2 pi r. And what happens is these twos cancel, so we end up with um, pi and then r times r, so pi r squared. Panic, and there you have it, there's the formula. So really simple proof, um, just kind of takes a bit of um, thinking geometrically and, and visualizing how you can get from a circle to a triangle. But from there, it's very simple. If you know the formula for the area of a triangle, which typically you would, you would learn that before going onto circles. So it, it's kind of not a huge leap. You can take that prior knowledge and then derive this new piece of knowledge, which is the area of a circle. So yeah, hopefully you found that interesting. Uh, again, this is definitely not the only way to prove this formula, but I think it's a really simple way. And a way that hopefully now that you've seen it, you can remember it so that if you ever are drawing a blank on, you know, the formula for the area of a circle, um, you know, perhaps you could just think of these concentric circles and unwinding them and realizing you get to a triangle and maybe you could just derive it from scratch if you ever had to. So if you found that uh, explanation helpful, please be sure to give the video a like. And if you're someone who likes to keep your finger on the pulse with the kinds of questions other students are struggling with, please be sure to subscribe to my channel so that you can stay in the loop. All right, tick boom.